Hello and good afternoon, friends. Today, I wanna to talk to you about a situation that one of my clients is going through, and I think maybe it'll be a good conversation in case this ever happens to you. So, the story. About a couple weeks ago, we had a pretty big storm roll through, and it was some pretty high winds. Unfortunately, for this particular guy, the winds knocked over a bunch of trees, which happened to smash his trailer. Now, his trailer got knocked to pieces. It's literally just bits laying around. It's just the frame left. And he wants to rebuild his house, right? As most people would want to rebuild his or rebuild their houses. So in order for him to build his home, he's got to be able to tell the county what's already there as far as utilities. So gas, if you have it, electric, if you have it, right? Hopefully you do, but this one does have electric, your water and your sewer, right? So for this particular one, we already know that we have a, a, a bit of a problem. And that problem is there's a creek right next to this house. So home gets knocked over a few weeks ago and he touches base with the county to try and figure out, all right, what do I do? County comes back to him and says, well, here's what you need to do. You need to tell us what kind of septic system you have. Where is it? Locate it, flag it, etc. Tell us exactly what we're working with. And once you do that, you need to tell us what your, your design is for the new home. So he calls me, we, we go over to take a peek at everything and come to see what kind of system he's working with. And the reason that this matters is when you go to rebuild the house, you're basically starting over, especially if you have a mobile home that does, that does not actually have a foundation in the ground, right? So if, for example, you have a poured foundation, whether it's slab or whatever, on the property and the top part of the house gets knocked off, you're remodeling the house instead of new construction. So the rules are slightly different. With a new construction build, you're put into the same requirements that you would see for any normal septic system, right? And so what that'll mean is now you have to comply with modern standards. These modern standards are not super difficult uh, to comply with, but it does mean that you have to go through a lot more hoops and hurdles than if you had an existing structure you were refurbishing. So we have to figure out where this tank is. We get everything dug out. We figure out where the absorption system is. We've got a regular 750 gallon tank to a pit. Plain Jane, classic, basic 1960s type of system. Unfortunately, the tank looks like it might be leaking. And that's where he runs into a little bit of a problem. So in our state, all septic tanks are required to be watertight, right? So that means the inlet, outlet seals, and the actual tank proper needs to be able to hold water and not let it go anywhere else. So if this tank is leaking, now he's got to replace the tank. And if he has to replace the tank, because he's so close to the creek, that project gets very expensive very quickly. That's also why the county wants to have it inspected prior to the issuance of a house permit, right? So if he was to have already built the home and then find out that the septic is not viable or he needs to spend double the home's value to, to basically fix it, he could be up the creek without a paddle. So. That's why the county will make you wait before they issue the permit. So we, we look at the tank, we see what we're working with. We've come up with our strategy to verify, is the tank leaking, is the tank not leaking? That's gonna take a couple days. We come to find out, yes, the tank is leaking and he's gotta repair it. But in the meantime, his job was to talk to the county and figure out if I was to build a two bedroom house, would we be able to connect to the existing system? And that's where it kind of gets into a gray area of the system was already uh, basically working for a two bedroom trailer, but because the trailer was destroyed and it was a mobile structure, now he's got to update everything to modern code, which kind of puts him into a pickle. So let me know below, have you ever had this issue where when you're refurbishing a house or building a new structure on a previously raised property, if you ever had to go through this process? So now the homeowner is stuck where in order to progress in building his home, and he just wants a tiny home, he doesn't want anything crazy, he now has to spend another 20 grand, maybe 50, depending on how the county feels about that creek, just to even start building his house. And because of the way the properties list or developed, it's a giant hill to a, a valley where the stream runs, there's not really a whole lot of room to put a traditional septic system because everything's basically falling straight down. The other problem 
that this guy ran into is the placement of his well. His well is put dead center of the property right next to where the trailer was. In our state, and your state might be different, but in our state, you have to be 100 feet away from the well for modern construction. Older homes, you could get within 75 feet, and in really old houses, you could get within 50 foot for the tank, but your, your absorption system would have to be 75 to 100 foot away. The reason nowadays it's any system of the uh, property needs to be 100 feet away is because of leakage, right? So if you have a tank that is within 50 foot of the well and it leaks, guess what? You're potentially having that stuff get towards your, your well and that's never a good time. Um, so now he's got to update his entire system. So basically before he can even start the process of building his home, he's now got to go and tear everything out, start over and build a modern septic system just before he even starts breaking ground all because of a storm with a tree that fell down and hit his house so let that be you know something to think about where if you know you have trees around the house you should consider cutting them back a bit so that way your tree doesn't fall on it right or if you have dead trees in your property it's a good idea to make sure you take care of it and get rid of them before this becomes a problem so not only did he lose his home before he can even build the house, now he's going to spend all this time and money to even get to the step of laying the foundation. So he's already looking another six to eight months before he can even basically have a home again, which kind of sucks. So I hope that you found this story interesting and this kind of content enjoyable. If you do, hit that like button, hit subscribe. I try to have more videos out every day on the World Well and Septic. Leave a comment below. Let me know. Have you ever had an issue like this happen at your life or your house or any of the other homes you've owned? I look forward to that conversation. Until next time, guys.